to discuss a few concepts um, that I hope are familiar from a previous course that you might have had in numerical methods, uh, engineering, computing, uh, something of that sort. Um, and with mind you that when I refer to an ODE solver, I'm talking about fixed step s solver methods for, um, of the type like the Euler, which we've talked about in an e in a previous um, uh, lesson. And also, uh, um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, Ranjakata methods. And um, I won't discuss in detail variable step methods, but I will mention that the, the role that they play in some of the tools that that are available to you, in particular under under MATLAB, uh, the MATLAB ODE suite. Um, when we refer refer to ODE solvers, we're talking about methods that, as I said, are used to estimate the state vector and how it propagates in time from known, say, state values, initial conditions. At some initial time to to a you know to to another time, so we'll look at plenty of examples. So I hope you'll get uh, a good idea of what we mean when we're referring to ODE solvers and how they're used in the context of the course and simulation methods. A little review on on the Euler first order RK solver that we uh, used again in a, a previous lesson as an introduction to simulation. Remember the basic idea. Uh, and I think I always feel, uh, and I'll repeat myself, that once you understand what the order solver is doing, uh, you kind of have a good sense of what the more complex methods um, are trying to do for you. you. The basic idea is, you know, once you have, you know, your state equations, and again here x could be a vector, uh, and on the right-hand side, you know, are, are the equations, this is telling you what, what the slope is here, right? This dx dt. You know the the derivative with time is a slope. So the idea is, if I know where I'm at, you know, at this point here, if I know that slope, then I just use a simple. In the case of a Euler method, it's a simple linear. You recall, I just know the slope. I can step to the next time, and it estimates that I'm going to be here. And all of these, all numerical solvers have error. The fixed step solvers like these, where you give it a specific step and you just advance in time, live with that error and you try to minimize that error typically by trying to, to decrease the size of this step, right? The closer you, the smaller step size you have, the better that approximation is. The variable step solvers will try to, every step will try to adjust variable step, the time, in order to minimize an estimate of the error expected using that integration method. Right, so those methods have an iteration that's occurring. So sometimes they take a little longer, but they give you a more accurate um, solution by optimizing the step time. RK solvers are kind of just dumb, um, dumb solvers. They're just going to advance through time. But there, as I'll say later, some advantage in that because it's going to always give you a solution. Even if that solution's wrong, it gives you the ability to look at it and say, oh, something's wrong with my equations or with my model. I need to fix that before I optimize my simulation here. So there's, again, you have to learn how to use these tools in that way. Let's really look at an example that illustrates all the steps. Here's our state space model for the pendulum, simple pendulum. And this is an example that we looked at before with an Euler method, but uh, remember we defined uh, the two states, um, x1 and x2 being here the theta, you know, x1 is theta, x2 is x dot. So I have my f of x here, my vector of functions. This is all I need now. I just need to know initial conditions. And I can simulate this, and that's something that we looked at again in a previous lesson. Here's just a table that illustrates that. You begin with an initial vector of the states, you estimate, given those initial values, what the functions, you know, using those functions, you evaluate those derivatives at that previous time, and you basically calculate numbers, right? And given these 
you know numbers you can calculate this delta x and your and this is in the Euler case so you calculate this these numbers then come into this next step multiply it by your delta t and now you can calculate the next step and then and then you take the previous you you, know, you now take the values that sorry you now take the values that you calculated put them in as your initial condition and then you just repeat okay so i hope i've given you enough um, examples of what the order method is so that you can see how um, it's used and really uh, the only difference now as we look at more um, at, 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 at higher order methods is is how the um, how this estimate here is made is the only thing that changes again always consider step size we've mentioned this before with the order method it's always critical you always want to make the size small enough so you have good accuracy and um, it's always going to basically determine how accurate that approximation is. Okay, um, too coarse of a step size can lead um, to, and this should be inaccuracy, while too small of a step size can lead to long computing times. And for any of the fixed step solvers, that's always going to be um, the uh, the what you're balancing for variable step solvers you never specify a step size you specify a start time and a finish time and it will adjust the time step for you okay and that's kind of what i said here for you there are again usually only rough guidelines to help you choose a step size and and as we work some examples i'll try to convey to you some of those that you might use um, again the order method generally requires very small time step to get reasonable results and then you if you might find that the simulation blows up if, if you start taking too you know too large of a time step so be careful with that that's the case for any solver if you give it too large of a step size it can lead to inaccuracies and instability so the general run run jacata methods um, you know as we said the estimate of the dynamic state computed using the order method takes just a single evaluation of the functions on the right hand side and um, Again, the Euler method requires very small time steps because of this, and um, it's a because it's a first order method. So we're going to look at a fourth order method uh, because then you can take slightly larger steps and uh, you get a more accurate um, integration of your state equations. So the fourth order uh, uh, Ranjakata or RK4. It, now again, you're advancing in discrete in the discrete equations to a new state and at, at n plus one, you, you know the previous states and you use those previous states in some functional evaluation here, I'm calling this delta sub four, but it requires the previous states and inputs and also some, some fixed step time. And that function is shown here. And this is again, a you know, well-known uh, um, algorithm for, called the RK4. And uh, you have to compute these parameters, K1, K2, K3, and K4, which are shown here. So as you can see, K1 is simply taking the previous values and evaluating that function at those previous values. K K4 is evaluating those, pre those functions at sort of the next time step, if you like. Here, so here, here's T plus delta T, and here's at T, at T right? So, so here you're jumping to the next time step. So if you, if you were, imagine if you were, uh, we're, we're going to go from across time delta t. Here's, here's where you're at. Here's where you want to go. So you're actually evaluating your function because you, you know that you're here already. You're actually evaluating it at a future time delta t um, with an estimate in the states, right, based on the previous ones. So. I'm not going to make you write these algorithms because these are usually available and I'm going to give you a, a subroutine in MATLAB that you can just use where these uh, calculations have been uh, basically implemented already. But I just want you to see that that each time step now, instead of just using one evaluation in the order, you're now evaluating the functions four times at different time steps. Actually, these two are at the same time step, it's which is right in between. Hopefully you have some recollection of having been introduced to RK4. The RK4 algorithms are reviewed extensively in any textbook on numerical methods uh, or, and numerical solution differential equations. And again, I expect that you've seen this before. There's good books that have specific algorithms. For example, there's the books on numerical recipes. 
uh, have algorithms that you can use. You can find them in uh, implementations in, uh, in, in, in some textbooks in various languages. Um, and um, again, it's readily implemented in a structured programming environment. You can even implement it in, in a spreadsheet, although again, I, I would not recommend that because programs like MATLAB, LabVIEW, MathCAD, and Mathematica have these built-in functions and uh, that makes it very easy for you to write real simple code, as I'll show uh, shortly. Again, I expect that you are already um, either have adopted MATLAB for the, for the problems in this course, and um, now using it more for basic simulation uh, will be that much easier. And uh, I don't want to repeat that it's a nice procedural programming environment. Many libraries built in for you know, not only for solvers, but uh, other types of, of uh, analysis. It have a matrix and vector descriptions. The command window is makes it a user sort of interactive environment. So unlike other environments, um, sorry, unlike other programs, say like if you, in, we used to use, we use Fortran, or if you write code in, in C where you get executables, those are gonna be much faster. Uh, you can get compiler versions of MATLAB code that make it run faster, but really for most of the problems that will work in this course, using the um, the environment, the interactive environment in MATLAB, while not, again, computationally the fastest, is, is sufficient for what we do. The, the script or M files that we'll write um, can be run directly from the, the command line, and also these files also give you a way to to write analysis uh, program simulation programs that um, you can use to pre-process and process uh, data that you need for your simulation. Of course, the graphics library also, the plotting makes displaying data very easy. And again, it's expected that, that you've been using MATLAB and are starting to feel comfortable with uh, basic MATLAB usage program that I'll provide you I call RK4 Fixed. This is a ready-to-go subroutine and I won't say too much about this except you know the, the, the syntax is described here and how to use it. I'm going to show you plenty of examples. You don't have to edit this program you just have to learn how to use it and you can see it's a, in the subroutine form you have to send it certain inputs and it, basically what it sends you is the response of this of basically the integration of the equations from uh, start time to an to an end time uh, over a fixed number of steps, which implies that it's a fixed step algorithm. Okay, so let's start looking at how this uh, uh, how this works. I provided on this slide just the inside of that code, so you can see uh, that it just uses basic MATLAB code. Uh, you you don't. And I put a note here, you don't have to do anything with this solver. You don't have to come in here and add anything. It's ready to go. In fact, uh, I recommend not even opening it unless you're just trying to see how it was implemented. Um, and um, really, I, I just provided it here for your reference so that, that you can, if you want to make changes to it, you could for some reason. Again, it's a subroutine, so it just has to be called with the proper syntax. And that's what we're going to focus on, really, is how do you use this to, to do, uh, you know, to, to run simulations for this course. So the basic syntax, very simple. This shows the command line in MATLAB. You ask, you're ask, you asking it for a time and a vector, and x here is an array of all the states over multiple times, and those times are going to be defined, and values are going to be to come back from having called RK4 fixed in this way. Now, I'm showing it here at the command line, but you can call it from a script file, and that's how we're actually going to use it most of the time. So what you have to do is send it here, along with this tag, write the, the name of your file that has your system equations. We're going to look plenty of examples of this. You give it a time span. You know, I want to go from time 0 to time 0.5 seconds. You need to give it some initial conditions in a little vector here, and then you give it the number of points. That's what's explained here. Now, the reason I put this together quite some time ago was because MATLAB used to not have a, st a fixed step solver. They have very, very good variable time step solvers, but they didn't have a built-in, and they still don't have built-in fixed step solvers. They they do have fixed step solvers that you can download, 
and you can find those easily by searching for fixed step solvers in MATLAB and they provide you a download um, zip file where you can put them on your on your own uh, um, uh, computer and call them from MATLAB but they for some reason are not uh, built into MATLAB at least at, at the time that I looked at them. Again the built-in ODE solvers in MATLAB can do everything that we're going to do here and the most commonly used one is is the what they call their workhorse, which is ODE 4.5, and this is a you know fourth order uh, RK4, but it has a fifth order predictor. So it's called a predict, what's called a predictor corrector um, type algorithm, and so it has a variable time step. So it's making a prediction on error, and then it's it's uh, adjusting the time step and reintegrating to to, to try to improve the solution. Uh, there are many, many examples that you can find, uh, not only within MATLAB as uh, built-in examples, but also on the MathWorks uh, website. Um, the reason that I advocate using a fixed step solver at first and being able to use both of them actually is because sometimes your model is not correct. You know, you're, you're building a model, there might be some errors in it or it's not perfect, and uh, what I have found in the past, especially when someone's just starting to use these uh, solvers and learning also how to build models, you know, these solvers tend to hang up and people get frustrated because there's uh, no response coming back. So the nice thing about using the fixed step solver is the fixed step solver is going to provide results even if it has problems. And then it'll come back and then you can see, oh, there's a problem and you can start trying to fix it. A variable test variable time step solvers can then be used after you've made all the changes you need to fix your problem and then you can produce more accurate solutions using uh, variable time step if you need to but the fixed step solvers work for a large class of problems that will work in this course and when there are exceptions I'll show you as I've mentioned they don't have built-in solvers yet but you can find those solvers easily by and download them from their website